Good morning, this is Jeannie. Um, this is a video that I had uploaded earlier, but there was a problem with the audio, so I'm going to try to do a voice over and repeat it. I'm making a fabric pumpkin. Uh, this is some cream fabric that I have chosen. It's a knit and it has a two-way stretch. I've cut a 24-inch square and I actually have two layers there uh, to make a pumpkin. Now, there's different ways that you can cut your circle. Uh, you can lay it out and, you know, draw it and measure it. But I'm just folding the square, fold it over once, and then fold it again. And like I say, I have two pieces of fabric there. In hindsight, I probably should have just folded one piece because it, it is sort of thick. But the way I'm going to cut my circle is just round off the corners. Now, the circle of fabric doesn't have to be perfect for your pumpkin. And this is just one way that you can cut a circle. So I'm just going to kind of uh, round off those corners. And you can see it, it was really too thick. I should have just unfolded it and uh, cut one piece at a time. But I figured, you know, save some time, cut two pieces at the same time. You know, sometimes that works out for you and sometimes it doesn't. But it'll serve the purpose. You want fabric that'll stretch two ways. Uh, you want it kind of thin uh, and stretchy. You want it um, thick enough that it'll cover up your pumpkin. And if you use a white foam pumpkin, you'll have uh, better coverage uh, than an orange. So um, there's my circle. And like I say, it, it doesn't have to be perfect. So now we're just going to use one uh, thickness of material. And I'm, I've got that laid down with the uh, right side down. Of course, that material is kind of hard to tell if you've got a right or wrong side. Now, next, I'm using a thread and needle. And the thread that I'm using is a hand quilting thread. It's a stronger thread than just your basic sewing thread. Now, I'm using black just because I wanted the stitches to show up so I could uh, show you easier. Uh, what I would normally do would be use a, a thread that matches the fabric and that's a long needle it's a darning needle sometimes on the package they will say yarn or darn but they're they're longer they have a larger eye than a regular sewing needle and uh, but you need it you need it uh, for the length for this project so we're just going to start out using a double thread of course make a knot in it and secure your starting place with a couple of extra stitches there and you're just going to make stitches about a half an inch from the edge and go all the way around that piece of fabric. I had about a, about a 30, 36 inch piece of uh, thread once I had doubled it. Um, you don't want to have to, you want to be able to use the same thread all the way around the pumpkin. You, it has to be the same because you're going to pull that and gather it once you once you get your stitching done all the way around. The stitches don't have to be nice and neat, you know. Um, it's you know this is not going to show. Um, and even that black thread doesn't show, you know, once you get all the way around it, once you get finished. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm not sure what happened with the audio in the first video, but um, it just, you know, sometimes your equipment works well and sometimes it doesn't, so... Um, it worked fine on my end, but then I had a couple of people that saw the video that said, you know, they couldn't hear. So I thought, well, good gracious. I better just go back and redo it. Now, this is a very sharp needle, so be careful while you're, you're sewing. Um, and, of course, I got stuck. I always get stuck, no matter what I do, but... Just be careful because they are very, very sharp. And you do want to put them away. You know, put them in a safe place when you get through with them. There's something that you 
certainly don't want your kids or pets to get a hold of. So once you get all the way around the circle and you get back to where your starting point was, just stop there. You don't want to um, put any extra stitches. And then you're going to kind of tug on your uh, thread gently and gather that up, spread those gathers out, make them kind of even. But just kind of tug on the thread. You don't want to break your string. If you break your thread, you'll have to start over. Uh, but just kind of pull on it gently and kind of spread the gathers out kind of evenly. It kind of makes a little pouch. Okay. Now, you're going to need something to kind of weight your pumpkin down a little bit so it won't roll around once you get it stuffed. So I'm just using some dried beans. I think those are pinto beans. And I just put them in a little snack bag just to keep them from, you know, I don't know. I just did. So I just dropped that down in the bag, in the, in the pumpkin, I'm sorry. And then you're ready to stuff the pumpkin. So uh, this is some uh, fiber fill. It's some poly fiber fill. This came from Walmart. And uh, I had one bag that was already open. So you want to take like little handfuls. You don't want to try to stuff one big piece down in there. So just take little handfuls and poke them down in there. You want to make sure that at this point, you know, you've got your right side of your pumpkin, right side of your material facing outward. Uh, and just stuff those little tufts of fiber fill down in there. It takes quite a bit. It takes more than you would think it, it would. Um, This 24 inch piece of fabric is going to result in about a 10 inch by 6 inch pumpkin, so it's a pretty good sized pumpkin. So just keep stuffing it until you get it as firm as you want it. It'll begin to shape up. As you, you know, pull the string, you're going to pull that string in a minute and close that opening up. So you just want to carefully pull on that. And you can kind of shape your pumpkin as you go. You see some gaps and holes. It doesn't have to be perfect. You know, no pumpkin is perfect. So just keep shaping and tugging and filling in. This is why you want to use the quilting thread because regular sewing thread would probably break. Um, the quilting thread is just thicker and stronger. Costs a little more. Oh, and some of them had told me that uh, sometimes they do it, make this pumpkin and instead of quilting thread, use dental floss. So, I mean, that's another option. You probably got some of that in your drawer. So just keep tugging on it until you get that opening uh, closed up as much as you can by pulling on the thread. Just keep tugging and pulling. You'll finally get it together there. And once you get it as close as close as you can, hold on to your thread and start and put your needle through. You want to catch both sides and you want to close that opening up by making stitches there. So you have to kind of hold on to your thread with one hand and put the needle through with the other and just kind of uh, keep working on closing that hole. You want to catch both sides of the fabric, and it'll help if you, when you're catching both sides of your fabric, if you go under where you stitched your gathering stitch, uh, that will that will be better. That way, you won't, you won't have any uh, of your gathering stitch to show. So just keep stitching back and forth till you get it closed. 
It'll take several stitches. And once you get it closed from both sides, you want to go like from end to end and put in a few more stitches too. This is where you have to be very careful about not sticking your needle in your fingers. Sometimes I use a thimble when I'm stitching, but today I didn't. A thimble is like a little metal cap that you can uh, put on the tip of your finger to protect it a little bit. Well, actually, I use it on my right hand, and I use it to kind of help push the needle through. Um, Do you want to close that up to where you don't have, you know, any gaps? And when we get this closed, uh, we're going to run that needle all the way through the pumpkin to make that little little dimple on the bottom of your pumpkin, and that will just help um, make it be shaped more like a pumpkin. And then we're going to attach a real stem. Now, I saved my pumpkin stems from last year and just put them out in the garage and let them dry and then a few weeks ago, I got them out and painted them. And I have a tutorial for that, and I'll include that in the blog post link. But you can go to my blog and read the post uh, about the painting, about how to save the pumpkin stems and how to paint them. Those links will be there. This is why you need that longer darning needle to be, excuse me, to be able to do this. Sorry about that. Let me see if I can mute my computer. Okay, now I had to tie my thread off to use a couple of knots there because I kind of ran out of thread. So uh, now I'm going to re-thread my needle. I've got to have another piece of thread to go through the center. So just kind of uh, see, we're going to make a little run through with a needle. And now on my pumpkin, you can see my little bag of uh, pinto beans there. That's okay. I, I, that doesn't bother me. If that bothers you, you can use something else. You could like not put. You could use rice. You could use uh, uh, different things and you don't have to put them in a bag you could use something like white navy beans and just put them in there loose and it wouldn't be as noticeable as that but for my purposes that pumpkin's going to be sitting there like that so i don't know i just thought i'd put it in the bag this time so i'm threading my needle again again i'm using a double strand of thread and uh, putting a knot in it And this is where you have to be really careful. You're going to go right down through the center and let it come out on the bottom side. And this is where you want to be very careful and don't let it, don't stick yourself. But push that needle through. And when it comes through, just pull it all the way through. And then you're going to go back Leave a space of about a quarter of an inch and go back and come back out the uh, top there and pull on that and snug it up just a little bit and see that makes a little little dimple for the bottom of your pumpkin and it helps keep the shape. 
So now you have to kind of hold on, hold some tension on that thread, and then you've got to put a couple of locking stitches to just, you know, hold it in place. You can make another pass through if you want to. Uh, I didn't on this one, but I will, you know, do several stitches there to, you know, hold that in place well. When you're ready to end off your thread, if you take your needle and uh, push it and make it come out two or three inches away from where you're stitching, then that way you don't, and then you'll snip your thread there. You won't have that little short end of uh, 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 thread showing. It'll kind of hide your thread, you know, once you uh, cut it off. It looks like I put a couple of stitches in it to close that opening up a little bit more too. You want to close your opening up and make it as tight as you can because you want your stem to go on top of it to cover all that up. So if you leave it very big and put your stem on, you may have something showing there. Now then. So put a little tension on that and snip it off. And then your end of your thread is not left sticking out anywhere. Okay. Now, like I say, my dried beans show, but that's okay. All right, so now you're ready for your stem. So that's where I'm just measuring. It's about about 10 or 11 inches in width um, and about six inches, six inches in height. Now that's not counting the stem, of course, but, uh, and there's the stems. Uh, those are my leftover pumpkins from last year. And I just uh, trim those off the pumpkins and cut away as much flesh of the pumpkin as I could and left them out in the garage to dry. And, uh, then I brought them in uh, a few weeks ago and painted them with some gold and um, black paint. And I like the way they turned out. I've made some with polymer clay uh, also, uh, but the real thing is the best. This is one of, the thing, one of these things you have to prepare ahead of time. Now you can buy these on Etsy and you can probably get some on eBay, but, uh, you could like enlist your friends when they do their fall decorating this year, get them to save their pumpkin stems for you. Now I'm going to attach that with hot glue. I've got my hot glue gun heating up over there and I'm just going to um, try to cover the bottom of the stem good enough to stick, but I've, I've go all the way out and get all those little points, but I don't want to have so much excess glue that it squishes out, you know, once you uh, put it on the pumpkin. So uh, just, you know, dab it here and there. And uh, I think I put a little bit on the pumpkin too. Just a little bit, not a lot. And then just stick it on there. 
Now you want to hold it and you want to hold that till it dries. So just, you know. And that's it. I like the way it turned out. Um, I had a little bit of excess glue there, but it, it doesn't really show. So, and of course, when you handle your pumpkins, you know, don't handle them by the stems. I, I do that even with my real pumpkins. You know, when you go to pick out your pumpkins, I pick out my pumpkins kind of according to the stem. I try to pick out pumpkins that have the best stem. And um, that's it. So I've got several more colors to do. And I thank you for watching and check out the blog post, geniepence.com. Thank you.